Good evening everyone and welcome to Gundam News. And today we're starting off with some pretty big news if I do say so myself. Yesterday, Gundam Battle Operation 2 was launched for the PlayStation 5. And it wasn't just a mere port of the PlayStation 4 version, we do get some extra cool features. We get better loading times, better frame rates, and also um, it will make use of the new features on the PlayStation 5 controller. Um, things such as haptic feedback for more realistic rumble and also use of the adaptive triggers, which is kind of their feature to increase the tension on the L2 and R2 triggers to really make it feel like you're actually firing a real gun. From what I've heard, it's kind of a cool thing to have in single player, like for a little bit, but in competitive multiplayer, you're probably going to want to turn that off. In addition to the fact that you're piloting a mobile suit, you're not firing the gun, the mobile suit is firing the gun, but whatever. Um, a question I've also had quite a few times is if I play a battle operation 2. And unfortunately, last generation I went purely computer and Vita, so I just haven't had the chance to play it really, but for this generation, I am considering picking up a PlayStation 5 once they release a completely black version and once you can actually buy the damn things, because that's a big problem too. Another game that won't be easy to play due to entirely different reasons is the newest Gundam game they've announced. Now, this thing got announced yesterday, so we don't really know a lot about it yet. We got this teaser picture here uh, featuring the Strike Gundam, and all we know is that it's going to be called Gundam Arsenal Base, it's going to be an arcade card game, and it will also be a real-time strategy game. So it definitely sounds like something I would want to try out like once or twice and see how it goes, but um, as for now that is all we know. I will of course keep you updated as we get more information. Now on to the new releases for this week. On the 23rd we got the Robot Damashi GP01 Full Burnian and this is honestly a great looking version of the Full Burnian. Comes with a lot of accessories, a lot of special parts, and it's also going to cost you a pretty penny, 8,140 yen, with tax included. Robot Damashis sure have come a long way, both in quality and in price. On the 25th then, we got the rival suit, the GPO2 as a G-frame. It comes at a more affordable 3,740 yen, tax included. And it of course does make some sacrifices, but it's still a really nice looking thing and comes with all the accessories that you need. Including of course a piece of gum to make it a candy toy. On the same day we got another candy toy release, the new Gundam Artifact line. And this was something I was completely unaware of, but something now that I know it exists, I'm actually super excited about. And I am totally looking forward to what they're going to do in the future. For a mere 450 yen without tax, you're getting a small pale orange model kit with a whopping 50 parts. I mean, for such a small thing and for such a cheap thing, and just like looking at the details they've got, they look so amazing. And the thing with this line is Bandai was kind of going after a resin kit feel with like a lot of detailing. And it honestly looks like an unbeatable deal with also a really strong starter line. It consists of the High New Gundam, the Nightingale, the Exus Gundam, the Byland Custom, and the Rig Diaz. And I honestly hope that this line is going to continue on for a long time. I would love to see some gyms or some Zakus in this line, and maybe expanding past Universal Century too. And that still wasn't everything for the 25th. We also got Gundam Converge Plus One. And this lineup is a celebration for the 10th anniversary of the Gundam Converge line. And rather than normal sized mobile suits, they now went with plus sized mobile suits that couldn't really fit into the normal Converge lineup. So we've got a bunch of bigger machines going for 900 yen, excluding tax, featuring the V2 Assault Buster Gundam Rick Contio Zeong or Masala. Each of course with their own piece of gum. And good news for the people who like bigger mobile suits and are also into the Gundam Converge line, since it's number one, there is hope for more down the line. 
Then on the 26th, we got some pretty interesting looking books that I definitely want to pick up down the line. Um, Failure of the Zeon Army in UC0079 and Heritage of the Zeon Army from UC0079 to 0096. Uh, both will retail for 1,320 yen with tax and are definitely on my wish list again. Um, I do wonder if Failure of the Zeon Army is going to be more of a kind of wrap up of things we already know, just listing all the things, or if they're really going to go in depth and also offer us some new things that we haven't seen in any other sources. On the 27th then, we got a bunch of Blu-rays on sale for the Builder series and Double Zeta, and the Blu-rays for Double Zeta, it's your typical uh, collector's edition, 20,000 yen for one half, so 40,000 yen in total, each will contain half of the series with some cool extra content, some really cool cover art, and also a clear file by Hidetaka Tenjin, depending on which store you bought it at. And in case that name doesn't ring a bell, here's the name on screen, and I highly recommend you to go Google that man immediately after this video. Even if you don't know his name, you've definitely seen some of his absolutely amazing art around. For the build series though, we get a few normal Blu-ray releases, and then there is the Gundam Build Divers Compact Set. Uh, these consist of two volumes, 10,000 yen each, excluding tax, and volume one includes episode one to 13 of Gundam Build Divers, normal, and for some reason, episode one of Vanilla Build Fighters, Build Fighters Try, and Gundam Build Divers Re-Rise. Okay, uh, volume two then gets crazier and contains episode 14 to 25 of Build Divers, again, normal, and then episode 14 of Vanilla Build Fighters, Build Fighters Try, and Build Divers Re-Rise. I get the joke they're trying to do, but why? On to the new releases then, um, we got a confirmation for the release date of the simply beautiful Metal Robot Damashi Zeta Gundam Katoki Signature. It will be releasing in June and starting February 2nd, stores will begin accepting pre-orders. Also in June, we'll be getting the Robot Damashi Effect Part Z2 version anime, which will include explosions, muscle, muzzle flashes, and also vernier effects. And now for something completely different. Do you like fishing? Do you like Gundam? Why don't you combine the two and get Zagok styled lures. 2021 is starting off wild. Um, this pseudo bait will be available in Shars Custom Red, Xeon Green, and Mass Production Blue, and claims are being made that the claws will attract all kinds of fishes. I have absolutely no idea if that's how it works. I know nothing about fishing. But what I do know is that if these sell well, We'll get more of them, and let's face it, they probably will. And honestly, this last image here makes it seem like you fed your Zagok to the fishes, mafia style. Moving right along, do you need more Gunnam apparel? Of course you do. Uh, for 5,500 yen, you can own this amazing looking Mark II t-shirt with images made up of scenes from the anime. Or for 3,850 yen, tax included, you can get a plain black t-shirt with some scenes from either Zeta Gundam or Gundam Wing. All of these shirts will be available in March, or you could save up some money and get the absolutely fabulous looking Shars Custom Sweatshirt for 7,150 yen, tax included, and the Shars Custom Sweatpants for 6,600 yen, tax included. Unfortunately, this is over at the Bonquoto website, so you're gonna have to go through a middleman if you wanna chill out at your home in Char style. Not gonna lie, if that was actually available like in stores here, I would have actually considered that. And when you're done wearing your Char custom clothes, you can sort them in the red Xeon folding container, which can hold up to about 50 liters of stuff. Also, it's totally not red because it's Char custom, um, but it's red because that's the color Xeon used for containers with mobile suit parts for ace pilots to make sure that they wouldn't get them mixed up with the less good parts for the normal grunt machines. 
I'm not making that up. That's what the website says. Um, these will be released in April and will also feature a hold to padlock the case shut because we all know the Gundam universe has a really big theft problem. Last year, Gundam started their collaboration project with Hello Kitty, and it seems that they're going to be going full steam ahead this year as well. For a limited time, there will be a pop-up shop in Tokyo, which will sell various crossover goods, including acrylic stands, badges, a small box, a smartphone stand, a tote bag, and much, much more. Also, if you spend over 2,200 yen, you will get a free random postcard. And I'm not gonna lie, these designs are actually quite cool. I never expected Hello Kitty to look so good in a Char uniform. Um, then we've got some more craziness going on at the Gundam Cafe, where for a limited time you can now get the Le Creuset pilot meal. I love how this is almost like something you could actually see the pilots in Gundam eating. If only it hadn't been for the included mask on the actual dish. Still, I would have loved to see their reaction to getting served this dish. Like, just imagine Isaac's reaction to that. Um, at the same time, there will also be a Waldfeld burger, which will come with Waldfeld's personal recommendation to not use chili sauce, but to use yogurt sauce instead. Look here, Waldfeld, I respect you. You like coffee, I like coffee, but you put yogurt sauce on my burger, I will end you. Also, if it floats your boat, um, the Gundam Cafe is having a collaboration with Namja Town, so there's now a bunch of Gundam main character with cat ears. Again, the Gundam Cafe does have a quite substantial female audience. And as always, we end the episode with some poll-related news. This week, the result of the Zeong's Charm Point were released, and the winning entry will surprise absolutely no one. Of course, it was the Wire Guided Arms with a whopping 35%. Then, going down the list, 25.6% the hard skirt, 17% that it has no frills, it's a very down-to-earth machine, 7% uh, liked the mouth, 4.4% liked the size of the thing, 4.1% said a lot of verniers, 3.5% said the mono eye, and 3.4% said the horn. So yeah, I think these are quite the results most people would expect when thinking about the Zeong. Anyways, that has been all for this week's Gundam news. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great day, and I'll see you all next week for more Gundam news.